made again. Um, today we're going to be doing a video on the RB67, uh, which is a great medium format camera. I just wanted to show you guys this kind of tricked out speed graphic I have too. It's got a range finder on there. Kind of stole this Omega viewfinder off of another medium format camera I had. So I'm thinking about doing another video on this camera and the kit that I got with it uh, in the future sometime if you guys are interested in large format stuff. So here it is, the RB67. This thing's built like a tank. I mean, it must weigh like at least eight pounds of this lens on. Um, it's got the waist level viewfinder on there. And I do actually shoot this thing handheld. Uh, I've got this very nice Optech strap on there. I think it's made out of neoprene, something. I think I, somebody told me it was like the scuba diving material that they use in those uh, wetsuits. But it's got a reinforced piece back here of elastic. It's really thick and wide. And it has the proper connectors you need. Uh, for the RB, which I didn't know when I bought the camera, and I thought it was going to be impossible to get a strap for it, but they they are made. Then they're about twenty five bucks on eBay or Amazon, I think. So onto the camera. It's got a really big, you know, viewfinder on it. One of the best, I think, um, in all the medium format cameras I own and use. It's got a little magnifying glass in there and their mechanism is awesome. They have that little button there and all you do is you press it and it swings right into place. And in some medium format cameras, you know, working that little magnifying glass is kind of a pain, but not on this guy. You know, this comes off, the back comes off, lens comes off. It's a modular unit got a dark slide in there, your film advance lever, this is the shutter cocking lever, and the reason it's called the RB67 is because it has a rotating back. So if you see there, that little icon tells you you're in landscape, and if all you have to do is turn it, and now you have a portrait orientation. Now, this is really important for when you're working like on a tripod, right? You don't want to be messing around flipping this thing over. I mean, it's very heavy. So just having that convenience is a lifesaver. Very well-made camera. I mean, Mamiya, you can't really go wrong with, with their construction quality. And their optics are really nice as well. On this camera, we've got the KL 65 millimeter lens which is one of the most uh, modern lenses they had. Um, I think it was in the 90s. This camera was originally released in the 70s. Then the Pro S was released in 74. And the Pro SD, as you can read right on there, was released in 1990. And a cool little fact, if you wanna go on Google and just type in Golden Lizard, <laughs> They made this thing in like a green and gold color scheme that I've never seen any other camera, you know, from the factory in such a wild color, color way or color pattern. Camera itself weighs uh, 1,070 grams, which I have no idea what that means in pounds. Uh, or actually, the, um, yeah, it's, well, it's about six pounds. Uh, and then the lens is, um, pretty heavy itself. I'm not sure exactly what the weight on the lens is, but this whole thing, I mean, it feels like a good 10 pounds hanging around your neck. So the 65 millimeter lens has a 68 degree angle of view, which is close to a 32 millimeter lens if you were shooting a standard 35 millimeter camera. If you can see here, this is your, you have focusing knobs on, or focusing wheels on both sides. This thing is cumbersome. And you've got bellows that extend out. So, I mean, you can do some nice macro work with this camera. 
and get really close. Now this focusing scale, I have not been able to figure out how to read that. I've read the manual and it just doesn't make sense to me. So if anybody has any tips on that, uh, please leave your comments below because maybe you could teach me a thing or two. So onto the lens, you've got your, uh, I actually don't know what that little port is for, but or that one. You've got your flash sync on there. And they, these lenses have, so you've got your shutter speeds here, your aperture controls here. And then this, aside from your main focusing, you have what they call the floating system, which I, I have read it's for, you know, critical focus. So you would set, you know, your distance where you were, you know, you would read off of here, what distance you're at, and then you would try to match it on here. And I've read that it's not actually terribly important. You could, you know, if you're shooting this thing handheld like I do, most people just leave it on infinity and it seems to work fine. And I have some examples of some uh, photos I've made with this lens that I can show as well. Huge piece of glass in the front. It's on a Seiko shutter. And this thing is fully customizable. They sell different focusing screens, different finders. You've got a prism finder, a sports finder, which I find really interesting. They've got power drive backs, Polaroid backs, pistol grips, you know, flash brackets, that you name it. Uh, but this is intended, I guess, to be more of a studio camera just because of its size. You'd have to be really crazy like me to put this thing around your neck and walk around with it. But yeah, that's the overview. And then you've got your this cold shoe here. You just slap a flasher accessory on there. got your shutter release button there and you can attach a cable release to there this back comes completely off so you've got tons of options currently shooting triax and when I am done with this roll I will go ahead and post um, a loading video for this camera as well also want to give a shout out to Mondo Man 7112 that left some interesting feedback on one of my earlier videos. So check him out and uh, thanks for the tips, man. Appreciate it. <laughs>